Right now, though, I want to deal with an issue important, well, I think to all of us, as we live in a country where many, many of us and will for a long time travel by car, be it electric or be it petrol or diesel, our road network is important. And it has, well, up until recent times, I think, been expanding um, because it connects us and it gives our economy and our lives vibrancy and it draws the country together. But we have a, the old New Zealand Transport Agency, now wokely renamed Waka Kotahi, even though canoes do not travel on the roads. Waka Kotahi has a strategy, a couple of strategies. One of them is zero a zero road toll, which is a ridiculous pipe dream by, I think, what's the year? 2050, is it? 2050. Yeah, 2050, they say no road deaths. Um, yeah, good luck with that. But part of that, part of their cunning plan, while they're not fixing any of the potholes, part of their cunning plan is just let's reduce the speed limit. At a time when cars, when cars are getting better, safer to drive, when roads should be getting safer, what is this? Why are we slowing down the country? Well, to discuss this, we're joined by road safety campaigner Jeff Upson. Jeff, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us, mate. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Now, Jeff, just give us a little bit, bit of background your, uh, yourself. Road safety campaign that could cover a multitude of sins. Why are you into road safety and what do you do about it? Uh, well, let's go back to the beginning. So back in 2019, um, I found out that some of the roads around where I live, I live rural, the, the northern part of Auckland, um, and some of the roads around me were going to have a proposed speed limit uh, of 20 k slower than the uh, safe and appropriate 100, drop down from 100 down to 80. Yeah. Um, and some of them were dropping down to 60, and in fact, some of them dropped down to 40 from 100. Yeah. And, and so I thought, well, actually, I don't like this. I, I, I really don't like it. It's going to add time to my commute. It's going gonna, it's gonna to reduce my engagement because I'm going to be dr driving too slowly. I'm going to struggle to drive at such a slow speed in, in a modern vehicle. And so I thought, well, you know, I could get all angry and, 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 and just, you know, be angry and aggressive, or I could do something productive. And so what I've, what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to create awareness about what's happening, because the government, uh, you know, until it's sort of too late, they, uh, they sort of try and keep things under wraps, you know. So, so now that they're out for public consultation, it's, it's kind of too late in a way, because they've already made up their mind, they've already chosen the roads, they've already... Um, they've already stopped maintaining them so that people think, oh, well, the roads are not safe to drive on at 100 because of the potholes. And, and so they've, they've spent years trying to sort of condition us to uh, supporting what they're trying to do. And, and so I've, I've, I've just been campaigning for, you know, hashtag keep it 100 and maintain our roads. Because actually 100 is slow enough for a competent driver. Um, 100 is slow enough for a road that's maintained uh, with free of potholes and bumps and jumps and undulations. And so I did a bit of research and, and looked into the statistics and tried to get some information out there on Facebook. I, I've now got a following on Facebook of 25,000 people and, uh, and, and a lot of that content is shared beyond those 25,000. So, so a lot of people are listening to what I'm saying and, and, and I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that we can actually reverse some of these slower speed limits and, and get them back up to a safe and appropriate 100 um, mm. at some point in the near future. So, Jeff, what do you think at. the rationale is and is it a rational rationale for the speed reduction. And, and I'll be honest, I have heard from some people inside Waka Kotahi that it's almost a feminist push to drop people, stop people driving <laughs> in a macho fashion around New Zealand. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's just like, uh, oh, I mean, we, we, we could go way off topic talking about that. But, but look, Men and women both, uh, b both can drive competently. You know, like the old saying, oh, you know, I've got to drive because my wife can't drive. You, you, you know, I mean, we live in a day and age where actually we're pretty equal, um, you know, across mm. men and women. So, so what women drive too, and, and in actual fact, uh, a lot of women get speeding tickets too, um, mm. and, and that's when the speed limit's 100. Mm. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the whole feminist sexist argument. Is 100 <laughs> an unsafe speed limit? Oh, absolutely not. No. I mean, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's roads where you simply cannot drive 100. Yeah, right? like, and you like drive to the conditions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and any competent driver, you know, you know, to get a driver's licence, you actually don't need to show basic competency. And, but, it, but any competent driver knows that actually you can't do 100 kilometres an hour uh, 
past the school with school kids around. Yeah. Because it's you, it, it's genuinely dangerous. Mm. Um, whereas if you're driving 130, for example, uh, along a brand new motorway such as the Waikato Expressway or yeah. Transmission Gully, as long as you're in the part with no potholes, yeah. um, you know, 100, 130 k's on those roads is actually uh, perfectly safe. But uh, you, you know, you risk losing your license for demerit points because um, it, it's illegal. <laughs> and and so this this whole argument where where speed is the only thing that's going wrong on our road is wrong um, and, and I think in a way they're actually deflecting from the real issues um, and, and it's part of a, a agenda which I don't quite understand of, of making it take longer to get things places you know so for example trucks uh, trucks that can go 90 before they're going to be going 70 now because actually a lot of oh wow well, I never, hadn't thought of so, that yeah 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 so so you know the speed limit's 100 a lot of people want to drive in that 5 to 10 k's under the speed limit because they're so scared of getting a speeding ticket Mm. And, and so the, the, the same, same happens, you know. So the roads that I drive that are now 80, a lot of people are around that 75, 70 to 75 uh, mark, and that means that's what the trucks are going to be doing as well. And, and so what that means is an eight-hour journey might take nine or nine and a half or ten hours, uh, and, and so if the journey's taking longer, it's, it's, it's increasing fatigue, and it's also increasing the cost of delivering goods. Um, the depots are going to have to be rearranged throughout the country because the trucks won't be able to travel as far in one shift. Ah, you know, I never the, thought the, of the, that the, as well, the, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a, a legal requirements around how long you can sit in the driver's seat of a truck, um, and in the the, the the work hours. You know, if you go a minute over that, the police. Ah, make, I see. Oh, I look at that, road. and there yeah. again, another consequence I hadn't thought of. What? How much do we know? Have Waka Kotahi given us, Jeff? How many lives this will save, and how many road deaths are caused by speed? Oh well, well, well. For a start, the statistics are a bit uh, manipulated. You know what we're seeing in these publications. You know that they're spending a lot of money, and so they're manipulating things a little bit. Now, what they're doing is they're taking statistics. Say, for example, twenty to thirty percent, depending on which year you look at, twenty to thirty percent of fatal crashes in New Zealand, have a, um, a speed as a factor, okay? So not the cause, as a, a factor. factor. So, yeah, so for example, let's just, get, I'll just give you an example. Um, a 14-year-old boy um, steals his mum's uh, liquor, absolutely sloshed, can't even stand up, right? So, so he's 14, he's got no driver's licence, he's stolen his mum's alcohol, he's stolen his mum's keys to the car, the car had no warrant and the car's got ball tyres, right? And uh, so then he's driving down the road at 150 kilometres an hour and he crashes and he kills himself. Now, this is a hypothetical situation. Yeah, but that's not a speed-related crash. I get you. There are a whole lot of other factors. So if this is part of the great zero road toll strategy, it's not going to be effective. It's not going to make much difference at all. Absolutely not. It won't stop drunk drivers. It won't stop people driving cars in the pouring rain with bull tyres. You know, it's not going to it's not going to teach people basic driver skills and driver competency, and the only way to do that is to go back to driver education, um, and also to have checkpoints for alcohol and drugs um, on on you know more often. You know, so get the get the cost yeah, out of it. Yeah, because the, the truth is, the flip side, Jeff, if you really want to get to zero road toll, you'd just take the speed limit down to fifty on the open road and like ten in town, <laughs> wouldn't you? Problem solved. <laughs> well, it wouldn't. It would actually. Oh, I think it would make it worse. That's my yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm and saying. The logic just... is simply flawed. Do you think, and it's kind of been done surreptitiously, this, isn't it? Um, the reduction in speed limits. And so it's very hard to resist it, to resist this, what will be quite massive change. Yeah, well, ultimately, the only thing that we can do is change the government, because this is what the current government is doing. Yep. And, and there is nothing that we can do because they... Okay, have other parties said they'll stop this? Yes, so we've got the National Party, Simeon Brown, who will hopefully be the next Transport Minister. He's, he's quite strongly opposed to the blanket reduction of speed limit. Now, when, when I say that, he's not opposed to reducing the speed limit in appropriate places, OK? Because, yep. as you know, there are some roads where it's just default at 100 and actually you can't drive much faster than 50. You know, so, yep. for example, a very narrow narrow gravel road through a mountain. You know, you can't go much faster than 50 on some roads. Yeah. So, so he's saying, you know, absolutely, we can reassess some roads where it's appropriate. However, a blanket reduction on, on all of the roads is, is not the appropriate solution. Um, and so he's, he's quite strongly working on that. It's really fantastic to see him doing that. 
Mm. Um, and also I see the ACT Party is doing a little bit in that space as well, but I, I haven't really got too involved because I know uh, one of their ex-members, um, Beth Holbrook, was very, very supportive of reducing the speed limits around my area. So okay. I haven't got too involved with the ACT Party yet. All right. Hey, Jeff, I thank you very much indeed for the overview uh, and thanks for fighting for our right not to die but to drive. That is Jeff's Ups and Road Safety Campaign.